Hey, everybody. My name is Sean Flannery. Uh, a lot of people throw the middle name in there as well, Patrick, but I go by Hey You, Yo, or Dude, any of the above. They all work. So congrats on creating Frank in Penelope. Is this your first time directing a feature film? It is. It's the first time I've directed a feature. Um, wonderful opportunity, obviously. Um, and something that, I've, that I've, I've thought about doing for a long time, but it never really came wrapped in this gorgeous of a wrapping paper before. So uh, they afforded me a lot of uh, uh, latitude and creative freedom. And it, it, it was, holy shit, man. It was, a, it was a great experience. How did you prepare to direct for the first time? I started preparing to direct for the first time in 1990 with my first, first job. Uh, I've always been you know, inquisitive and I've always asked questions on every, every film set. So I, I studied on every film set that I've been on asking questions from, you know, back when we used to shoot celluloid, how, how to load a, an airy SR2, a 16 millimeter mag and uh, what a key light is. It's uh, David Tattersall taught me about lighting and he's an Academy Award winner. He wasn't at the time, but he ended up winning Academy Awards. So, I mean, it, it was always something that I knew I eventually wanted to do. Yeah. And I, I, I never thought I would have such an unbridled opportunity to do it with, with uh, you know, it was, a, it was a dream job. It really was. And I, I hope I get an opportunity to do it again sometime. How would you describe Frank and Penelope to people who maybe don't know about it yet? It is a horrific allegorical love story. It's about two star-crossed lovers who come into contact with each other by the infinitesimal possibility of two molecules bumping into each other in the universe. And they're set off on a ride that's kind of unrelenting. And it takes you through some precipice balancing moments. I hope people mm -hmm. dig it. I hope people dig it. But at its core, it's an allegorical love story. I mean, I definitely dig it. It was very vibes forward. It was very romantic, but there was a lot of brutality in it as well. What were some of your visual influences, maybe from cinema? You know, it's funny. Um, the, 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 I, I, I'm a mu movie fan. I mean, I love movies. I love yeah. movies. Um, but more than that, I love stories. Um, so there's not a specific look that I like. There are specific looks with different tones that I like, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I had an opportunity to work with AJ Ritano, one of, one of the best DPs I've ever come across. And I've been in the business 33 years. Um, the fact that he did my film was kind of flattering would be an understatement. But, uh, you know, we, I, I, I wanted it to look, I wanted it to have that, that dangerous love look of Badlands. I don't know if you ever saw that film, but uh, that's the, 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 the prototype for the look that I was going for. And man, I think AJ delivered in spades. Definitely. It has that real Americana vibe to it. And it seemed like music played a big influence. Would you say that that is true? I would say it's more than true. I don't know how much more true you can get than true, but uh, I have a soundtrack to every moment in my life. And I, 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 I use a term for a long time in writing, something that I've made up to, to, to try and describe what I'm trying to convey called nostalgic thievery. I can steal some of the most wonderful moments in your brain simply by playing a song that you remember in childhood. Mm -hmm. If I play, you know, uh, Miss, Bye Bye Miss American Pie, that makes you regurgitate a certain emotion. So, you know, you know what, 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 I can't harness whether it's good or bad, but, but you, get, you, you get a lot of passion with music. And I, I had, a, I had a, a soundtrack to this when I was writing it. So, and it usually never happens that you actually get to use the films that inspired the writing, but I did. I don't know how it happened. Uh, Alan Gilmer, producer, uh, William Shockley, Scott Dolezal, they believed in it so much. They let us hang on to those musical pieces that really inspired and punctuated every key being pressed mm -hmm. in the writing of the script. And I, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful 
Can't believe it happened. Like I said, I hope it happens again sometime. But man, yes, understatement of the year. Everything was inspired by music more than anything else. Any chance we'll see a soundtrack release at some point? You know, I, I think uh, Ryan and uh, Jared, our composers, are putting something together like that right now. And oh. speaking of which, they did an amazing job. I mean, they're, they're, they're original compositions for this. You know, we worked really closely over and over for months and months and months. And our final product, it hits on 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah, I would agree. There were a lot of really amazing character actors in this film. One of my all-time favorites, Lynn Shay, has a scene-stealing moment. Were there any actors here that you were specifically really excited to work with? I, I, I don't want to sound, you know, gratuitous and say all of them, but <laughs> really, we got our cast. Uh, Tiu Loigu was a casting director. And she brought us some incredibly original names that a lot of times, you know, if you use an original name, it's because you can't afford somebody better or they're either really, really, really exceptionally good. Mm -hmm. Ours is in the latter category. I, I, I'd never seen a Kaylee Cowan film or a Billy Budenich film, but I was really excited to, to work with them after seeing their audition tape. I mean, they, they, they cracked it out of the park. You know, I hope it was a fastball over the center of the plate, but they cracked it not only over the center field fence, but out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, so Jonathan Sheck, um, Charlie uh, Kuntz, uh, Brian Maylard, Donna Dierico, I thought was absolutely exceptional in her role. I, 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 when I saw her audition, I, I, I had no idea who it was. And I, I recognize that name. Where did I know that name from? And I'm like, holy shit, she... It's not a Derrico from, from Baywatch. Mm -hmm. But even without that name, that audition won her the role. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was beyond exceptional. And she did something so different than anybody else did on their audition. So without sounding gratuitous, oh, yes, my, all of my cast is amazing. Really, I was beyond stoked to work with every name in the film. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. There are some pretty horrific moments in this movie. I wouldn't call it a horror movie per se, but there's a lot of scary stuff. And I'm wondering, was there ever a specific horror movie that really messed you up as a kid that maybe laid some influence on, you know, on your career? Yeah, prob probably the scariest I've ever been in a film was uh, When a Stranger Calls. Yeah. Very old film. Oh yeah. But uh, that's the first time watching something and I watched it on a tiny TV screen and that, was that was frightening um so you know there's not blood and guts in the film but the story has so much mystery and fear and intrigue built into it that you don't need to see a hatchet going into a skull or a bullet pierce a brain i was horrified at that film and it was mm -hmm. simply because the story was so well constructed uh you're seeing release on june 9th right uh, june 3rd on June 3rd. So are you going through the film festival circuit or is it going directly to release? Well, I'm talking to you from Cannes right now. So mm -hmm. we've been uh, in France now for a week. Um, you know, and it comes to theaters on the 3rd. So I'm over the moon excited that, you know, something that me and the whole crew and the team of producers put together is going to actually see a theatrical release. You know, that doesn't normally happen. So mm -hmm. I'm holy shit level excited. Have you seen it in a theater yet? I haven't, if you can believe that. Whoa. I have not seen it in a theater. I've seen it, you know, on a sound stage in an edit edit bay on, you know, multi high resolution, huge screens, but I haven't seen it in a theater. So uh, I'm patiently awaiting that. Well, and I, will be, I will be sneaking into theaters. I, I'm excited for you. This was this is going to be amazing to see on the big screen. So, I yeah, that. I appreciate it. I mean, that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for talking with Dread Central, and I hope everyone can check out this movie ASAP. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the kind words, brother. Thank you very much. Of course, and have a great rest of your trip. All right, man. Take care. Bye for now.